I want to start by just talking about some of the guys uh, that um, we held or for whatever reason. So I want you, I want to talk to you about why we did, okay? Uh, Davion Warren, we uh, held him out. He tweaked his hamstring uh, Friday in practice, so uh, he, he did not go today. Uh, Traylon Smith, um, you know, he's, he's got a little turf toe. We've been holding him out. He did not go today. Uh, Ricky Stromberg had a, a little bit of a sprained MCL, and uh, he's been practicing on and off. But because he really got cleared to come back on Thursday um, uh, in limited contact, we did not play him today. And Jalen Catalan, uh, last scrimmage, had a shoulder that was uh, beat up a little bit. And um, we have been doing some medical work on him. And that medical work did not allow him uh, to practice today. Uh, all four of those guys uh, will be ready. Uh, most of them will be ready to participate in practice on Monday. The other, the other section is different. Um, and I won't comment on any of their injuries, but I, I will tell you that each guy that I'm getting ready to talk about, I believe, will be ready for Rice, OK? Uh, but they certainly, if we played Rice today, they would not have played, OK? So that's uh, Traylon Burks, uh, TJ Hammonds, AJ Green, and Sam Loy. They did not play today. Uh, but I expect all of them to be uh, ready uh, for the Rice game. All right, with that, uh, I'm ready to roll. Go ahead, Trey. Yeah, coach, just overall thoughts on how things went today. Special teams. I thought it was very physical uh, scrimmage. Um, I, I, last week, uh, Trey, I believe that our defense lasted. If if that is how you call it, they outlasted the offense. I believe last week, and I don't believe that this week. I think the offense. In the second half, I think the offense came back and did some really nice things. Uh, it was a pretty even scrimmage. Uh, maybe the defense had gotten the better of the offense a little bit uh, early in the first half, and I believe the offense responded, which I didn't feel like they did last week. Um, uh, with special teams, I thought we were good. Uh, we have to get better kicking field goals. Uh, we, we weren't quite as good today uh, with our uh, field goal game as what we have been in the past. And what about KJ's performance and any notes? I like KJ. You know, made? it's so hard, you know, when the whistle's so fast on him. But I believe, you know, he didn't take a lot of sacks. He um, uh, ran the offense well. He, I, I felt like he was accurate today. Um, so, I, you know, I think he's starting to feel like, you know, he's the man back there. And, and, uh, and our offense is, is, and our team is rallying around him. But I thought he had a good day. Uh, throwing and running the offense. Thought he was accurate. So you mentioned that Burks and Warren weren't there. Uh -huh. So that gave some other receivers that may not have we not see as much. Absolutely. Well, can you talk about who you saw today doing stuff? Well, uh, obviously, um, Jaquette and Crawford came in uh, and played the slot today. Uh, part of it, you know. Um, uh, J.D. White played in the slot as well, caught a, caught a long touchdown pass as well. Um, and then uh, two came in and, and uh, played the right receiver uh, for Davion. And, uh, I mean, we had some – Malik had a good day of running the football. You know, did we, he also – I think he was the one who threw it to uh, J.D. Uh, for the touchdown as well. So we had some bigger plays today. Uh, some of that is how we elected to play the players, and some of it is because our offensive guys made plays. Coach, you mentioned Jaquelin Crawford a second ago. What kind of a, a camp is he having? You know, we see him in the fastball starts during the week. He's typically with the first or second group. What have you liked about his camp? You know. He, he's he's been really good at times and 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 been below really good at times in other words I'd like to see him get more consistent but I think as the camp went on that his consistencies uh, come around uh, better uh, we've got some guy you know Harper Coles had a really good off season uh, or excuse me fall camp 
we're trying to get him a few more reps in that slot position as well. But uh, uh, I've 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 been impressed with uh, Jaquelin. You're saying the, the assistant coaches on defense and, and the players have spoken pretty highly of Miles Slusher, his versatility. Maybe he can do more stuff for you this year. What, what do you thought of his camp? Yeah, you know, I saw him. He came out like gangbusters about the first six or seven practices. He got a little nick, nick, nicked up, and and uh, you know he has to. He'll, he'll continue to learn how to work through some small injuries and things of that nature, but. Uh, when he first came out uh, in fall camp, he was rolling. And now he's kind of getting back. I thought he had a really good scrimmage today, and he's very valuable to us. And this is one from Nate uh, remotely, if it's okay. Um, hi, Nate. He, he was wondering um, – I think he's watching, yes, I'll say hi. Um, you know, going into the third week of camp, you're still two weeks out from a game, but, you know, you've been practicing hard camp for two weeks. Kind of how important is this week to keep keep pushing through? How important was this week or the next week? How important is this week coming up? Oh, you know, um, we will we will go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, against ourselves, trying to get our team better. Uh, on Thursday, we will start our rice prep. And uh, so the next three days uh, with school starting as well, with some other distractions that we haven't had because, you know, no school – uh, Monday's going to be the telltale of, of, of how good our football team, how mature our football team, in my opinion, is. And I expect it to be the, one of the best practices we have all year. I expect that because we've got a mature team. But Monday, Tuesday, and th Wednesday will still be in camp-type grind, per se, even though we're practicing you know, in the afternoon after school. Uh, and then, of course, Thursday, then that's when the – real excitement for the kids uh, becomes because you're starting for rice. I had a question about your pass protection that from last week. You said there was some stuff. What would you see from it and versus, you know, what did you see from the pass rush? Well, the pass rush was still very good. Uh, the p pass protection was much better. Uh, there was still, you know, some things that the defense – is doing to us well we we need to get the ball out of our hands and and I thought we got better in the second half of that scrimmage than we were in the first half uh, if I had any disappointment I, I thought we did a pretty good job of turnovers today we had a couple of tip balls that that ended up in interceptions and then we had an exchange I believe it was with the threes it might have been with the twos but I think it was with the threes we had an exchange problem put the ball on the ground uh, you know, any time that you practice ones, twos, and threes, and you have a 120 uh, play series, you, you know you got to kind of break it down in your mind of what really did happen, what didn't, because you've got so many kids playing. Uh, you know that some of them are just getting ready to play in a game, and they're not quite there yet. So it'd be very hard to go. Well, we had this guy, this guy, you know, we always play one versus ones and two versus twos. And we start one versus twos and all that. You guys have been to the, the scrimmages in the spring. So you know how we work. Uh, I believe the only way you can really get consistently better is play good on good. And I know you have to be worried about other things, but um, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Good. You didn't mention penalties, so they were better this week? Much better. You know, um, our jumping off sides on defense and our illegal procedures on offense were much better. That was kind of one of the goals uh, that we gave to the team going into the scrimmage. I'm not telling you that we didn't have them. I'm telling you that we certainly uh, cut that situation down. So you mentioned the, the, the real stuff. So that's the one versus one. What did you see? when K.J. and the Wands were up against the Wands? Well, you look at it, and, and I, th I felt like um, our defense was ready to go. Um, I'm not saying our offense. I think – I can't remember exactly, uh, but I think, you know, they may have three and, out, three and out of the offense the very first time they went out there. Then I think the offense may have gotten a first down and then stalled in the second, second one. And then in situation football – the offense played well. You know, when you're talking about red area, low red, get the ball back, uh, those those situations I felt like the offense played well. Coach, um, statistically, like how did K.J. perform? Did he have touchdown passes? Any? You mentioned a couple of tip balls that were intercepted. I don't know. Did he? Did K.J. throw a touchdown pass today? 
I don't know, Trey. I, you know, I know Malik had a long run for a touchdown, threw a long pass for a touchdown. Uh, but I, I, I don't feel like KJ had a bad scrimmage. You know, I just, you know, I'm trying to run the scrimmage, and I, I at times I'm not for sure exactly who did what out there as far as uh, who it is because I'm watching both sides of the ball. And and uh, but I, I do feel like. Just without looking at the tape, but KJ did a nice job of distributing the ball, staying away from sacks, his reads. You know, uh, I felt like another thing that we needed to improve on was our quarterback reads. You know, um, you know, I asked, uh, you know, K, K, <clears throat> KB and them, they they tally every day a percentile of reads. You know, and to me, I mean, it's not like. You know, you're reading the dictionary. You're reading a 260-pound guy over there, and to me, it, he's up the field. I hand the ball off. He's not. I run it or I throw it. Uh, but I didn't think our reads were up to what our standard is, and I think we did a lot better job in that today, and KJ's included in that. You got a couple weeks before kickoff. How do you feel it's about exciting. it? Exciting. Yeah. How do you feel about the team right now? I mean, Love them. You, got, you got a good team. Or, I mean, you I talk know. about making the state proud. Is that is that happening this year? <laughs> we got to get out there and play first. Do I like where our team is? Yes. Um, I don't know how we're gonna do, but I like the team. I like the way they work, and I like where we're at. Did anybody flash for you defensively? Well, our defensive line, you know, they've been very good throughout the camp. Um, they certainly had their share of pressures. And, you know, again, how many sacks they had, I don't know. You know, some of them we call that weren't, and some of them we call that might have been, you know, because the quarterback's not live. Are they letting up? Or, you know what I mean? Uh, I thought they did good. I thought our linebackers played well. Seemed to me like our coverage was pretty good, especially with the older guys, you know. So, you know, our scheme, you know, we're able to do more. And you're only able to do more when you have the people that can do it. And uh, we have the folks that can do it. And we've got a defensive coordinator and defensive staff, very, 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 very knowledgeable. And uh, so – we can give you a lot of looks, and we can execute the looks, and that's that's made us better. Same way, kind of a two-parter. Um, how, how the running backs do today? I guess you obviously held out Smith and Green. How the running backs do, and how close are you guys to figuring out who that number two guy is? Well, we five's number two, five number two, and and uh, he ran well, he ran hard, had a good day, really good day. You know, with Rocket last. Week, I'm not for sure that he had – I don't know, but I can't remember if he had more than a five, a seven-yard run last week, last week's scrimmage. But he improved so much from – in practice, I believe, because of, hey, I'm, I know I'm in the SEC. I got, I got hit by SEC players, and I'm still – I'm okay. And I think he gained a lot of confidence last week. That's why I was hoping that A.J. Green – would be in this scrimmage today. I, I felt like he would take that leap as well, but obviously we weren't able to get him in there. But uh, two is two is Rocket. I I I think that, and then I think your three backs going to be between Dominique and and uh, uh, Oglesby uh, with Green having that opportunity when he's able to practice. I know you got you know cross training linemen that's been going on for a long time, but I, I, I got to believe last year you guys really took it to another level with the COVID concerns with linemen and secondary and that kind of thing. And talking to the assistant, sounds like there's a lot of cross training going on again. Have you guys basically cross trained like you did last year? And how, how important is that to have guys that can play all you know the, the various positions? Well, you know, with the two spot thing that we were doing, what for the first six or seven days or whatever that is. That allows us during that time to cross train people, and we believe it's very. I've done it all the time when I was an offensive line coach, you know. Um, but I also tell the guys that if I'm the second team left tackle, let's say the worst thing the the you get in a game and the left tackle for whatever reason he's tired or he gets hurt or whatever it is, and coach moves somebody ahead of you and you've been playing second team on the depth chart. I don't believe in that. I believe that if a guy, whomever your sixth guy is, he needs to be ready to play. 
and you need to have an opportunity. You you need to have seen that. And so, Bob, what we do is we do a f ones, twos, and threes, and then combo. And combo is a combination of maybe your worst nightmare. And in other words, hey, we can't afford to lose this guy. Well, in the combo period, you just did. We got to find out who that guy is. The next day, it might be we can't afford to lose Ricky Stromberg. Well, you just did. Who's Ty Clary, the next center we have? You've got to find those things out. And so, yes, we're doing a lot of that as well, both on the offensive line and the D line. We're trying to see who's who's got that athletic ability to be between the defensive end, three technique, who can do that. Obviously, the first name that comes to my mind is Utsi and Gregory. They both can play defensive end and inside as well. So we need to know that because we need to have our best players on the field. And if our second team nose guard is our sixth best player, well, number four better be somewhere. He either needs to be the nose guard or we can move this guy in the nose and him on the field. And that's how I feel about it. Saying on the offensive line, I think Coach Kennedy told us the other day that the battle at left guard would go down to the wire. Yeah. How is that going? And it looks like Brady's taking most of the first team st uh, snaps that we've seen. Is is he starting to emerge? I would say uh, he's he he's going out with the ones. I would say that there's still a major battle between him and Jones in that there. I mean, major. Um, but he's he you know obviously Jones was starting and now he is so. Obviously, us as a coaching staff think that Latham's playing a bit, little bit better than him, but there's still a major battle there, and then we'll have to see what happens uh, at, at today's scrimmage too to kind of really get another full live, let's go sick them, you know, type deal and figure it out. When Jalen Catalan was in here with us the last time, we asked him about the targeting penalties and does he have to do anything differently? And he's, he says he's just got to be him, but <sighs> – He's hitting people hard, obviously he hurt his shoulder. Do you have to dial him back any? How do you deal with a, a guy who's so aggressive like Jalen is? <laughs> you know, you just explain the rule. You know, I think I think everybody thought it was helmet to helmet. It's it's not. It's anything to helmet, you know, and and uh I think a lot of our guys, you know, don't understand that if it's not I mean, it can be shoulder to helmet. I mean, you know, if you you hit a guy in the head, uh, that's targeting. And uh, so we just have to continue. It, you know, he he did a lot better after he got his first one last year and, and then had an unfortunate one. And I forget the game, maybe LSU. And uh, uh, that was unfortunate, you know. Uh, remember when we had Dan Skipper here? And then every time he did anything, <laughs> you know, we just got to watch out for that with, with Jalen. Coach, what, what impresses you most about Rocket? And maybe what's your, your favorite part about coaching him or what's right. it been like coaching him so you far? Know, you go over to academics, and he'll the, he, that's the first guy they mention. Always on time, asking questions, this, that, and other. He, he is who he is, the way he runs his life. He's so accountable. Uh, but on the field, what I like about him, he's hitting the hole faster. You know, he got speed a lot of times, but he's also 228 pounds. So, I mean, a guy that has speed, he, you know, if they nickname me Rocket, I'd, I'd try to run the ball outside. And you guys all know I ain't got no speed. And so, so that's what he's trying to do. He's Earlier, he's trying to cut the ball outside. He's 228 pounds, man. And uh, that's what he's doing a little bit more now, and that's what he did today. And make people tackle you. If you're fast and you're that 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 size, makes people tackle you. And then every now and then you run by them, but uh, that's what he's doing better than what he did um, uh, earlier uh, in the scrimmage and in camp. And you, you mentioned. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tom. Oh, you mentioned Keith on my number. Uh, yeah. Is he? How, how much can he contribute to you? Well, I, I, in practice, he's at least uh, three best receiver we have, uh, maybe higher. He's a good. He's a good football player, and he, we just got to get him a little bit more um, confidence, you know, when he's out there uh, in live situations. Uh, but the guy's going to be a really, really good – I don't want to put pressure on him, but 
I can't because he puts it on himself. He's another Rocket Sanders. He's that kind of kid. Uh, but he is pressing for starting and pressing hard. Uh, I think he's – I think at this point in time he's one of our top three receivers, and I believe that. And, you know, when, when you all played, when you was a freshman, if you thought you was better than a guy who had any knew where you wanted to play, and certainly if he is, not all of you, Bob, you, you probably – you probably was a bad basketball team because if you had a pulse, you could be on the team. Uh, look, he's a good player. He's going to play for us. You mentioned uh, Malik. Sounded like he had a pretty good scrimmage in Kendall. He did. Said he's, um, how good do you feel about him as a number two guy? And obviously you don't want anything to happen to KJ, but just how good do you feel about Malik and his camp and if you know if he needed to play? Well, he can run now. And – he can roll out and throw the football, and he's getting better in the pocket, but he has to get better. Um, but when he's running out, he's getting better at throwing the football, and he's a major threat with his feet. He's number two. There's not anybody, in my opinion, right now that's that close to him uh, as a two quarterback. And I think whenever we get into live games and he's able to use his feet and somebody's not you know, tagging him and the play's down, I think he'll be a really good quarterback for us. I don't know that we'll run the same, exact same offense with him in the game because we want to use his attributes. You know, the start of the season is just around the corner, and if you're into sports betting, Bet Online is where you should go to win some money today. Whether it's live bets during games or future bets on who you think will win the championship, Bet Online has all the latest odds, news, and information for all your online sports betting needs. Visit the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So before the next big game or before the season starts, head on over to Bet Online and start playing today. That's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. 